Hi, I'm Tom D and in this video I want to show you how to authenticate to Elasticsearch using token. There are three token-based authentication services in Elasticsearch. Service accounts, token service and API key service. In this video I want to focus on token service. Let's start. To use tokens as an authentication method in Elasticsearch you need to start Elasticsearch with license version as trial because the basic license version doesn't provide this functionality. Therefore, type environment variable xpack license self-generated type trial and start Elasticsearch container. Once it's started, then reset the password, set up some password for your Elasticsearch instance now Elasticsearch is up and running. Create the new request as post type and as address your cluster address underscore security all out to slash token. Choose your authorization method. In this case, I'm using username and password and body to row. Type to JSON and here you need to specify grant type. There are three grant types I want to show you. The first one is called client credentials. Let's start it. The code token is created. This is the token name, token ID. You can use it right now to authenticate to the cluster. Let's say you want to check the health status of the cluster. And as an authorization method, you choose all out to and place the token over here. Send it. Now we can see the green status of Elasticsearch cluster means you are able to authenticate using that token. There is another type of grant type. It's called password. Password. For that, you need to specify as well username. Username. In this case, Elastic. You need to specify password. And in this case, I have a simple password. This token have an expire time. Expires in 1200 seconds, which means it's 20 minutes. It also have a refresh token, which means you can use that refresh token to extend the lifetime of the token which forward us to the next grant type, which is exactly refresh token name. If you type refresh token, then you need to specify exactly the same parameter over here and place that value. When you place that value and send it, you will have a new access token. You may notice that the value has changed. Then you have another refresh token value as well. And you can use that value again to extend the lifetime of the token by creating a new token. So you have another token and then you can use this refresh token again value to obtain another access token with another refresh token value. Invalidate refresh token. For example, you want to resign from refreshing that token. You can delete that refresh token and make it invalidate in this way so it will not make it possible to refresh that token. Therefore, change the request type to delete, remove the grant type and left the refresh token value. If you run it right now, you will make this refresh token invalidated. It's done. One token got invalidated. Now if you run the query of that token that you deleted, trying to refresh the token, you will get the exception that token has been invalidated. So the refreshing the token with that refresh token is not possible anymore because it was deleted by you. Now, if you want to delete actual token, which means the token that was created, let's create quickly one token. Let's say, let's say grant client credentials, authentication case, okay. Let's create that token. The token is created. So now if you want to invalidate that token, that is 
the values presented here. If you want to invalidate that token, just type token here and place the value of the token. Then switch the request to delete, run it, and token is invalidated. So now if you want to use that token, let's say in another query to get the status of uh, health status of Elasticsearch, you will see the exception that token is invalid. The access token expired. If you have a user that has manage token cluster privilege, this user can create tokens and those tokens can be used to create another tokens and you can have this multiple tokens. Let's see it on a system. A new token. You will get the token here. You can copy that value and you can create another token and use a token as authentication method. So you got another token. This token you can copy and place again as an authentication method. And you can keep on repeating that steps. Actually, I wrote a script, token bump recursive. It keep on calling the method that creating the token in a recursive way. You can see that every token is created with an authentication method using the previous token. So the function is working in a recursive way and it let me create over 3 million of tokens this way. It mean, means that the level of nested level was around 3 million. The depth was 3 million. So basically you can create maybe infinitive number. I guess there is some counter that might be long data type that limits the number of tokens or maybe there is no count and you can create infinitive tokens. This I haven't checked in the source code, so I'm not sure right now. Maybe you can write in the comments down below and tell me if you know the answer. Thank you for watching this video and let me know in the comments if you like it, if you want more videos about this topic. See you.